Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this wonderful morning again that we could come and be gathered in your presence. We know, Lord, where your presence is, there is liberty. And thank you for the love of your people that are gathered in your house and those who are listening from their homes and all over the world. I pray, God, that your wonderful presence would reach out and touch every soul. Bless the reading of your word, Lord. Bless the preaching of your word. And we pray, dear Holy Spirit, you impart what you want to speak to your people this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you so much. This morning is such a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Um, I want to just share a few points <clears throat> from the book of Second Timothy this morning. And um, I pray that God will bless your hearts. Um, the Second Timothy was uh, the second letter written by Paul to a young a leader who was trained under his ministry and Paul had so much confidence in this young leader the amazing thing is that this book was written when Paul was confined in a prison um, if anything Paul was the one who needed encouragement he was the one who needed prayers he was the one who should have been down in despair but praise God for this wonderful amazing man of God who was even in, in prison, in bondage, in hardships, in difficulties, he was more concerned about what was going on in the lives of people around of him. And, and more importantly, about a leader that he, he had left behind trained. Um, Timothy uh, could have been intimidated because for the very gospel, for the very call, for the very ministry that Paul had trained him, he, he saw that Paul was beaten. He was persecuted. He was... Uh, uh, ridicule and thrown into the prison and perhaps uh, if anything Timothy could be fearful that he could run away from this ministry and I believe Paul was writing to him to encourage him and if you see 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 3 uh, Paul writes to Timothy and said I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day in the prison Paul was not concerned about himself but he was concerned about the work of God that was going on around him that he had planted that he had encouraged and established leaders friends God is calling us this morning to be praying for people for ministries for the work of God that is going on around of us we may not be in a situation to be there but one thing we can do is to be concerned about the work of God that is going on there. Praise the Lord. What a man of God. I don't think we can, none of us can take anybody else's name on the same plane, on the same level as Apostle Paul. God recognized him and he wrote 13 books in the Bible. But I do want to acknowledge and thank God that he has given us a servant of God in Pastor Binu and Sister that they have been praying for each one of us. Um, I get calls from him and texts from him encouraging and I know last two years haven't been the most uh, wonderful time for ministry but he has been going out and I want to thank God acknowledge what you two are doing God bless you for, for all that you are doing in the kingdom and Paul says to Timothy that he has been praying for him day and night it is sometimes it is so easy that we fall in the trap that we only think about our own selves that we are only worried about what is going on in my life and around of me. But God is teaching us from his servant, Apostle Paul, that we have to remember those who are all around us. Verse 4, he says, Greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Praise the Lord. In the midst of a very hopeless situation, those prisons that the Bible talks about in those days were nothing like the prisons that we know of today if anything these prisons are so luxurious and it's like a little hotel that people go there and spend time with but those were like dungeons they were like dug out in a, a cave like thing with probably just one one door that that was all they had and damp and darkness and they had they had no joy at all but in the midst of that hopeless situation Paul is so hopeful and he's saying that I greatly desire to see you praise the Lord 
if we are today in a desperate situation i want to encourage you from the life of god's servant apostle paul that we can say like him too that i will come out of this desperate situation god is going to heal me out of this desperate sickness god is going to take me out of my financial distresses god is going to take me out of my family problems that i'm going through whatever your need is if you are there despaired and tired and weary and feeling totally hopeless and you can't see any any ray of hope around of you be encouraged church from what we learn from apostle paul's life and he is saying to 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 timothy i greatly desire to see you i'm going to see you some I'm very soon. You can declare this morning that Lord, I am going to come out of my situation. God, I'm going to come out of my prison that I am right now. God, I'm going to come out of this situation that I am in right now. And he says that I may be filled with joy. Praise the Lord. How many times we have we are we are guilty in, in our own lives how many times we have going through problems and then we can't see any good at all and when someone comes and encourages us we are still very negative because we can't see any good happening around of us and we are still living in that area of negativeness and we can't see the positiveness of what god is doing in and through us during those situation friends i want to tell you if you go if you allow god to take us through those valleys those shadows those hard times in our life you are going to come out much much stronger in the end you'll be able to say god i am more than a conqueror not just a conqueror i've been through one i've i've been victorious through one but when you keep going through that no one is going to be able to touch you praise the lord i was i was talking to my elder brother and and i said to him you know what whatever is happening around us nothing else can happen if you are already on the ground you can't go any any further <laughs> further down and if you are in that situation today the only place you can go up is god god is going to lift you up praise the lord he said if you remember him he is going to exalt you in due time if you humble yourself and remember that god is god praise the lord let god be god in our lives today in verse 5 he said when i call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother louis and your mother unis and i am persuaded that it is in you as well therefore i remind you to stir up the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands praise the lord paul was quick to remind timothy that timothy you have generations of anointing and blessing and call upon your life from your grandmother to your mother and now it is upon you friends i want to tell you this morning that you are not an ordinary person hallelujah god has called you he has made you fearfully and wonderfully in his image and when god has made you in his image when god's calling is upon you whatever happens along the way nothing is going to change the plan of god that he has for your life and for my life praise the lord the things that we hear hear about today that the 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 news that is troubling us today should should only exalt us and take us closer to god that we hear about him and know that faithful is he who has called us praise the lord when problems come when difficulties come when we go through a situation in our life there doesn't seem to be any hope we can declare like the servant of god job said i know that my redeemer he lives when all his blessings was taken away from him his own body was messed up in sickness and boils and soul he all he could do is say that i know that my redeemer lives praise the lord i want to encourage you this morning friends that our redeemer is still alive hallelujah even though you may not see what is going on in your life right now even though you may not see the victory even in this life that you are in now paul was able to say even if i'm absent in the body i am present to be with the lord hallelujah we can say like shadrach meshach and abednego they said to king nebuchadnezzar o king the god that we serve he is able to save us but even if he doesn't save us even if we lost our life in this fire i am not going to bow down to this world i'm not going to bow down to the things of this world i know and i know that one day i'm going to meet my savior praise the lord in verse 7 If Paul writes for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind praise the lord friends i just want to dwell on that for the next few minutes 
that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is the opposite of hope. And our hope is only in Jesus Christ. When a believer loses hope in Jesus, sure enough, there is no more hope left. And you will be consumed, I will be consumed with fear in our lives. But Paul is saying to Timothy, the background that you have, the inheritance that you have, the call that you have, the, the, the anointing that God has placed upon your life, there is no room for fear in your life. Praise the Lord. But He has given us the, the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, when Jesus was talking to His disciples about the end times, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said to them, the disciples were asking Jesus, what are the signs going to be in the end time? Jesus was already talking to them. He said, take heed that no one deceives you. In the last days, one of the things that will mark the coming of the last days is deception. We were just outside during the break after the first service, and we were talking and we said that if you tell a lie over and over again, the same thing, it will become the truth. And that is exactly how the world is manipulating. That is exactly how the powers to be are manipulating the world. Is feeding into our eyes, into our ears, into our system, the same thing over and over and over again. It comes to a point that we believe that that is the only truth that we know. But the Bible tells us that the only truth we have is Jesus Christ, His Word. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. How can you not be deceived? How can we not be deceived in these days? Because we may not know what is the truth. When we do not know the truth, we need to go to the truth. And that truth is Jesus Christ. Asking Him, Lord, please reveal to me what is the truth. And even if we did not know, the only thing to do is just to be still and to know that He is God. Amen. We do not need to be part of the deception and the gossips and the uncertainties that are going around of us. The only thing that we know, oh, the COVID is ravishing the world. It could be another sickness that will come. We don't know where it started. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what vaccines are available or not available. We don't know government's policies are right or wrong. But all I know that He brings healing upon His wings. By His stripes, I am healed. And that argument, nobody can fight against you. That argument, no science, no doctor, nobody can, can tell you something different. Because you know and I know what Jesus did on that cross of Calvary. Somebody say, Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. The world is going to get more religious and more defiant and more deceptive in the name of religion. You and I only know that Jesus Christ, He did not come for those who were already healed and well, but Jesus came for the sinners like you and me. That is why we have hope. When the world says that you got to be polished and fine and everything, then God is going to recognize you. My Bible tells me when we were yet a sinner, Christ died for you and me. Somebody say amen to Jesus Matthew chapter 5 again, verse 5, Jesus said, Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See to it that you are not troubled. Friends, what is happening in Eastern Europe and in Ukraine and Russia, uh, between Russia and Ukraine, breaks our hearts. We don't want people going through that. We, are, we haven't even seen anything like that and I'm not sure whether we'll ever see anything like that because we are such a sheltered society. But I want to say to you from the Word that these kinds of wars have already been spoken in the Word. Verse 7, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Our human nature is, we don't like pain, but we like to win all the time. Wherever people talk about pain, we will run away. Wherever people tell us how to, how to be less painful, we will be drawn towards those, those, those teachings and those people. Wherever people talk about winning, we are going to be drawn towards that. That's the very essence of our human nature. But my Bible tells me, as the end times come, it is going to be the beginning of sorrows. And all I want to encourage us, including myself, that we need to train ourselves 
how to handle these sorrows. Praise the Lord. And Paul says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. In such time of sorrows and pains and things that are happening around us, the very first thing to do is to go back to the word and to be strengthened and to be encouraged and to know what God is saying to us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us because he promises, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. I'm with you to the end of the age. Praise the Lord. The God who sent his only begotten son because he loved us so much. Today, he's not going to let us down. And when Jesus went back to heaven, he sacrificed himself. He paid the penalty of all our sins. He took care of all our sickness. He took care of all our mental agony. The crown of crowns that were placed upon his head. He sent the Holy Spirit to come and to be with us. Praise the Lord. And he is here in our midst. And Paul says, God has not given us that spirit of fear, but he has given us power. Praise the Lord. The God we serve is all powerful God. The same God the Father, through his word, he created heaven, he created the earth, he created all the <laughs> animals, excuse me, and the fish and the trees and everything. And he created you and me. Praise the Lord. Is there anything too hard for him? The God who is a creator, the all powerful God has given us the power. Praise the Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, the Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is just not like some ordinary power. It is the dunamis power of God. The power that creates, the power that propels, the power that makes things happen in our life. Somebody shout hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Today I want to encourage you, speak to your situation right now. Whatever you are going through, wherever you are, you can say to God that God, you have not given me a spirit of fear, <clears throat> but you have given me power. Praise the Lord. I'm going to rise up. I believe that is why Apostle Paul was able to, in that prison, rejoice and look beyond himself because he knew there was another power that was working inside him. Like he wrote in the book of Ephesians, I can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ask or think according to that power that worketh in me. The power of the Holy Spirit. He is there inside you and inside me because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say hallelujah to Jesus Christ. Even though sometimes we may fail and we may go off track, God doesn't just leave us alone or get angry with a stick and there. God's desire is that he, he will draw us back into his fellowship. The power of God that walketh and breaketh every bondage inside our life. Somebody say hallelujah to Jesus. Then he says, he's not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. Hallelujah. In the midst of our hardships and painful and difficulty, he's writing to Timothy and he's saying to him, Timothy, don't be afraid because God has given you power, but he has also put in your heart his love. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 Verse 5 verse 5 says God has poured forth the love of God has been poured forth in our heart by the Holy Spirit who is given to us again without the Holy Spirit we can't have the power of God without the Holy Spirit we cannot love like God can love surely we will say to somebody I love you I understand you I'm there for you but after the emotions are are wearied, the emotions are tired, we will back off and we will not be able to love like God loves us. God is not tired of loving you and me. And he said, the Holy Spirit who comes in us, he sheds abroad, he pours forth the love of God inside our heart. Then we can do what Paul did was in his hardship, in his pain, he was able to love the people that were around him. He was able to love Timothy. He was able to love the church that he was planting. His desire was still, like pastor was praying, that until Jesus comes, we will still need to keep proclaiming the word of God and sharing and telling others that Jesus is coming very, very soon. Praise the Lord. And the third thing he said, God has given us a sound mind. The interpretation is self-discipline. Being able to keep ourselves under control, under chair through the word of God, that we be, remain a living testimony 
for Jesus Christ. That we live a life that is alone and isolated in Jesus Christ alone. And we come together as a body of Christ. Everyone join to Jesus Christ through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 9.27 Paul said, I beat my body unto my subjection. Lest having preached to others, I myself don't become a failure. He was giving analogy as an athlete who will walk hard for the sports that they are playing. They will stretch beyond the limits and the imagination just for that little game that they are playing. The same way in our Christian life, we have to keep disciplining our life day in, day out, through the word of God, at his feet. Because when we are stretched, that when our faith is tested, praise the Lord. And when our faith is tried and tested, we know that we have a reward in Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah to Jesus Christ. In chapter 4 of 2 Timothy verses 7 and 8, Paul says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. All these are past tense. He was in prison, but he was able to say, I have disciplined myself. I have walked in the power of God, not in my power. I have been able to love because of the love of God that is in my heart through the Holy Spirit, not my love. And I, now I'm, I have fought the good fight. I have run that race. I have finished that race and I have kept my faith. Friends, are we able to say this morning, I have fought the good fight. Are we able to say that I have finished the race? Many of us start off very well, but then we give up along the way. We are not able to handle sorrows and hardships and difficulties. Or maybe we are carried away by the deceptions of the world. The best place to be in is at the feet of Jesus Christ. You may not be able to do what others are doing, but you are still able to sit at the feet of Jesus and to be able to do His perfect will for your life. The challenges that you may be facing, I don't know. The pastor may not know. Others may not know. But that is a call that God has upon your life. It's between you and between God. Praise the Lord. And I want to encourage you this morning that when things happen, as we enter into more sorrowful and hard and difficult times, the Bible encourages us, understand this, that we are not given the spirit of fear. But we have the power of God. We have the love of God. We, our part is to discipline ourselves so that we are all walking together as we enter into the end times as Jesus is coming through. Verse 8 of 2 Timothy chapter 4. Paul says, finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. We all want to be rewarded in this world. But Paul's expectation was something different. He was not looking for any reward during his lifetime that he was living in. But he was looking for the reward on that day. The day after all the sorrows have come and gone. The day when all this world that we are living in, the temporary time is gone and past. The day we are able to survive every COVID and every war and every difficulties and every economic hardships that we are able to survive. The day that we are able to say every sickness and disease, we have conquered. We have run the race. We have, we have finished the, the, the race. We have fought the good fight. We have kept our faith. And Paul said, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, God has a crown for every one of us. Don't give up yet. It is not time to give up yet. It is time to rise up and to say to God in the midst of your hardship, you have not given me a spirit of fear. Shall we stand? But Lord, you have given me power. You have given me love. You have given me a sound mind. Hallelujah. And Lord, I know that soon and very soon, I will see your glorious coming on the clouds and all these things will go away. I will be connected with you. There will be no more deaths. 
there will be no more tears there will be no more sickness there will be no more wars there will be no more pain we will be united together with him forever and forever in the meantime paul encourages timothy in second timothy 2 to practice and teach what you have learned what we have heard what we have believed what we have experienced keep sharing with somebody wherever you can go in in verse 3 of chapter 2 he said endure hardship as a soldier you know all you need to do is switch on the news and see how this fight is going on and how the soldiers are fighting for what they believe it is is their cause and paul is saying as soldiers of jesus christ we believe and we know Amen. that jesus christ is the only way the truth and the Amen. life Amen. fight for it endure hardship in verse 6 he said work hard and persevere as a farmer does when they plant the seed the the plant doesn't come up immediately but we need to work hard and and just sitting down they will not get us anything we need to keep working hard until jesus come in verse 15 of chapter 2 he said be diligent to present yourself approved to god we all want approval of man we all want to know what others think about us and what did they what do they say about me and you but paul is saying to timothy the only thing that you need to worry about is what god thinks about Amen. you Amen. praise the lord Amen. and at, at the same time maybe you need to just worry about what the devil thinks about you as well you remember in the bible when when this uh, uh, demon talked back and said paul i know jesus i know who are you <laughs> if the devil doesn't know you then you are in trouble devil must know that you are a child of god somebody Amen. say Amen. hallelujah to jesus hallelujah. devil must know who paul is devil must know who fred is who been who 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 all these people that are sitting here are devil must know that they that we are a child of god ex second uh, uh, timothy 222 he says remain pure and righteous pursue that purity pursue that righteousness because that's where our self discipline and self control come verse 24 says be gentle in serving others praise the lord it is a quality that you and i more than anything i need is to be gentle with people around of us the place where you can practice your gentleness and my gentleness is right inside our own home amen hallelujah amen. with our wives with our children with our husband being gentle sometimes you know the way things work the very people you love you are harsh upon them that's the way we have been taught But I want to encourage you with the word of God this morning. Start our gentleness from our homes. Talk nicely to our families. Talk nicely to our children. Talk nicely to our husband. Talk nicely to our wife. Be prepared to overlook the mistakes they make. And be gentle. That's what the Bible tells us. As we are serving one another. Sometimes we think serving is only in ministry. Sometimes we still serving is only in the Christian realm of life. <coughs> Excuse me. serving starts from our very very home i learned the hard way until nobody listens to me now i become very gentle because that is the only place to be in uh, chapter 2 verse 1 where paul says be strong in the grace of our lord jesus christ amen, amen. above everything else be strong because we know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world shall we lift up our hand and glorify our god in heaven oh yes thanking him god even though everything around us seems so messy so hard so hopeless but i know and i know that you have not given me a spirit of fear yes but of power of love and of a sound mind god i'm going to come out of this if it's your will but even if it's not i will not give up lord i will keep loving you because you have loved me looking for the day lord that you are going to come soon and very soon in the meantime lord you have promised me that my children will not even beg for bread you will take care of me lord you will take care of my needs lord you will take care of my health you will take care of my family you will take care of my mortgage payments you will take care of every needs yes. not only mine but lord of all your children all over the world yes, wherever they are praying and worshiping god you will help us to be alive to those who are lost hallelujah thank you jesus 
bless you this wonderful morning lord thank you that you are in our midst oh god thank you lord that you have placed us in a privileged position lord where our sins are forgiven oh god on that cross lord jesus you washed all our sins and yes, iniquities lord. yes lord lord on that cross you take took care of all our sickness and disease oh god by your stripes we declare that we are healed lord you took care of all our anxiety the chastisement of our peace was upon you oh god and today we pray and we declare god that lord you help us in times of sorrow in these last days that we will not lose hope but lord we will hang on to your power to your love and a sound mind that you have given to us hallelujah give the lord a clap of praise